So what are they doing? The extension. Remember, this is why I go through this now, because we did this yesterday and some of you might have forgotten a little bit. The extension is that this is where you can definitely tell them you are trying to improve or reduce how much that posterior disc pressure is happening in your back. Okay? You're not trying to stuff a disc back in. You're just trying to reduce posterior disc pressure in exactly the opposite way that you are sitting right now and creating posterior disc pressure. That's how disc injuries happen. Sitting down, low level. McGill has done millions, not millions, but lots and lots of studies. He's the most researched on lower back anatomy studies of when people sit, they cause both posterior disc pressure and it pushes and pushes and pushes and starts breaking those annular fibers like onion rings and just cracking through and eventually going out the back from sitting is one of the number one causes of disc injuries. Not lifting in the gym, not lifting the pot plant, that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back, but it's the 10 years or how many years of the sitting in a poor flex posture that us as humans have not got a strong enough disc structure to handle that. We are not designed yet, we haven't developed for strong enough back discs and their degenerative structure anyway, that's why they're happening more in the 30s and 40s. The disc bulges are happening. That's what I think. So classic 30 to 50 year olds is when they get it because they're degenerating and they've spent 10 to 20 years sitting down in an office environment or whatever they're doing or bending over. That's another cause. Lots and lots and lots of bending over. But sitting's worse because the direct compression down. That's continuous. It's a continuous pressure down without relief. You'll find that people bend over like brickies and stuff don't have as many disc problems as office workers do. One, they're fitter because they're probably stronger. They've, you know, they've got better glutes and stronger backs and they can lift more. Still bending over, so they still have a few problems, but it's the compression down without relief is the issue. So we're trying to reverse that to, for them to recover. So therefore they can't be sitting as much. The advice is Avoid sitting for long periods. How do I do that? I don't work. Well, you're going to have to get up and go to the toilet and get a water bottle and go for a coffee or do something. Every hour. Get a standing desk is the best solution these days. So standing desks are gold. But they still need relief from standing. They, they, they don't have enough. It's still load. And they may have to sit down and do the stretches or whatever they're going to do to relieve the standing. Because they get muscle fatigue from standing. So they might have to sit for a little bit to relieve that. Or they go and lie down somewhere in the office or the first aid room, you know, at least doing it before they go to work and after they go, when they come home. It's the priority stuff. You know, if someone's not doing all the exercises, what is the priority? It's probably the first two, right? So I put them at the top there. And then you can progress through. Rotation might be a relief thing, okay? So the extensions to get their range and then they get in here and go, oh, that just turns off my pain. Okay, we'll sit there for a minute and turn off your pain. Can you give them exercises that relieve their pain just like you were doing in the clinic? But if I put your knees there, does that, how's your pain? It's almost gone. Right. So when I move you into rotation, your pain is almost gone. They feel like you're fixing them or they, that movement fixes me. No, it's just dialing down pain messages so muscles can then kick in. There's no way you're going to get or be very difficult to get muscles firing when there's pain hammering into the muscle. If you can turn that pain off, bang, you get some activation, then you get some stability, then you get some stabilization, then you can bear load. Okay, so part of this is not just, you know, oh, you're doing this to make your pain better because often that's the stretches are fixing me. No, this is a means to an end. Yes, it's giving you relief and it's getting your range better and that's helping with your function, but it's then going to enable me to get those exercises of strengthening in. Um, the sciatic nerve flossing, I probably wouldn't give straight away. You'd probably sort of kick that in about week three. Okay, it's just probably too much, too much aggravation through there. And I, just because they've got a positive straight leg raise doesn't mean you have to start cracking into that. I'll probably leave that for a little bit. Get them used to doing a few things. Get their pain down a bit. Is the extension working for them? Before you start dragging that nerve around, it might be sort of a little bit impinged. But what are you doing it for? And how many times a day? Twice a day. Activate, 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 activate. It's pain relief for these people. They need to keep repeating this stuff. 
and still there's no strengthening going on here. Maybe they can get practicing this at week three. So they do two weeks of pain relief work and stabilization, then they can start doing this and practicing that. Because guess what? They're doing it all the time anyway. If you add, you think, well, you if I add it on now, they'll do it correctly. It might be too much load for them. They've got a sore back. They're lifting their kids anyway, whether you like it or not. At this stage, they're probably not ready for more load. Even though you want to perfect their form, it might be, well, too bad, I need to get in what's relieving stuff, this pain down, because you're aggravating all the time with lifting. I'll fix that lifting pattern later, because if I add that on now, it's just more lifting. For, for them, it's just more load. So you've got to choose your battles. 